At least 171 people were killed and more than 6,000 wounded in a massive explosion that shook the Lebanese capital Beirut on August 4. Lebanese authorities said that the blast was triggered by 2,750 tons of ammonium nitrate that has been stored unsafely in a warehouse. Lebanon is in the midst of a crushing economic crisis. On 10th August 2020, Prime Minister Hassan Diab and the Lebanese capital resigned due to the political pressure that was intensified due to this event. Hello guys, I hope you are all doing great. You are watching Sapensi Island. It is not exactly clear what triggered the blast, but Lebanese authorities are pointing towards an accident rather than a deliberate act as a possible cause of the explosion. The powerful blast sent seismic shockwaves that shattered windows and shook the ground across the Lebanese capital. For Lebanon, this was the most powerful blast in recent history, which is also reeling from an economic crisis and a surge in coronavirus infections. A two-week state of emergency has been immediately declared. The explosion, which struck with a force of 3.5 magnitude earthquake, was heard and felt in faraway places like Cyprus, 200 kilometers across the Mediterranean. Hours after the blast, a fire still blazed in the port district, casting an orange glow across the night sky as helicopters hovered and ambulance sirens sounded across the capital. In Beirut, the residents are still coming to terms with the scale of the disaster. There is a default working principle in Lebanon. If there is a smoke in Beirut, Israel must be behind the fire. The explosion happened amid high tensions between Israel and Lebanon. Some were quick to suggest that this wasn't the result of an accident but a terror attack reminiscent of the tire bombings that rocked Lebanon in the early 1980s. The implication was that it was a bombing conducted by the Israeli actors as the preemptive action against Hezbollah as part of a broader campaign against Iran. However, both the Lebanese government and Hezbollah officials have denied any Israeli involvement in this explosion. A former head of the National Security Council indicated that the blast may have been the result of Hezbollah's munitions exploding. Now that raises some pointed questions about the warehousing of explosives in crowded areas. The massive explosion in Beirut provoked fear and then speculation that it was something akin to a nuclear blast. A lot of us who are not accustomed witnessing larger explosions conflate that mushroom clouds and spherical blast radius as nuclear. The blasts may have begun when munition in storage caught fire. A rising cloud of white smoke featured crackling and bright pops consistent with when small munitions begin cooking off. Then a fireball erupts followed by an orb of white that quickly expands from the blast zone. That is the pressure of the shock wave condensing the moisture in the air. Large explosions on the ground also produce the iconic mushroom cloud shape just like the nuclear blast. Due to simple physics, both produce a pyrocumbus cloud shape like a mushroom. The physics is the same. The explosion produces hot gas that quickly rises. The air above blunts this hot gas as it tries to move upward literally pushing it downward and forming the distinctive cap. This phenomenon is called the Rayleigh-Taylor instability, which describes the interaction between two materials of different densities when they are forced together. In an explosion, the less dense hot air is meeting the more dense cold air and forming it into the mushroom shape. That's why the mushroom cloud is not only limited to a nuclear blast. The explosive potential of ammonium nitrate is well understood. It has been used in numerous terrorist attacks, including the Oklahoma City bombing of 1955. Ammonium nitrate is a chemical compound used in agriculture as a fertilizer. It is also used in mining and construction industries where detonation is required. Ammonium nitrate is not an explosive on its own. Rather, it's an oxidizer drawing oxygen to the fire and therefore making it much more intense. However, it only ignites under the right circumstances and these are difficult to achieve. Under normal conditions, the chemical is highly stable. 
This also requires pressure to build up in a confined space without being able to dissipate. Simply put, it would have taken a string of bad decisions and some really poor luck to trigger the blast that shook Beirut on 4th August. The Lebanese government has now some tough questions to answer. It was an accident waiting to happen. Because of the low cost and easy availability, the fertilizers are used to make bombs. But bombs also require two more components, a detonator and fuel. Accidents involving fertilizer explosion is very rare. Perhaps the worst such accident happened in Germany back in 1921, killing 500 people and in US back in 1947, killing 581 people. Because of ammonium nitrate's explosive potential, most governments have regulated its storage and processing. It is most likely that Hezbollah was using that warehouse to manufacture fertilizer bombs, one of the many mysteries which now the Lebanese government have to dispel. The explosion adds to a barrage of crisis situation that Lebanon is facing in the last several months. It puts strain on an healthcare system that is already under severe pressure due to the coronavirus pandemic. The Lebanese economy is in a state of free fall. The Lebanese lira has lost up to 90% of its value since last September. The resulting financial collapse has crippled the economy, leading to soaring inflation, unemployment and poverty. If the government fails to contain this crisis, it has the very potential to turn Lebanon into a failed state. If you have watched this video till this point, please do like the video and comment something and don't forget to push that red button, subscribe there and yes, press the bell icon. I hope you really enjoyed this video.